Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, and that is also Alfred, but don't worry about that. Um, welcome back to Bloodstained. So, last time we uh, defeated the first two bosses and unlocked uh, Alfred and Miriam, who have joined Zangatsu in his quest to fight the moon. So these things are a problem, but Alfred's got this. So you may remember Saifa Belnades in the original um, Castlevania 3. You may have also seen the anime. Um, for reference, the Castlevania anime is based off of Castlevania 3. So a lot of people who are like, hey, what's this? Might actually just know the anime. So there was this, uh, there was a little miscommunication, and for whatever reason they drew Saifa as a, like, withered old man. So it was like, huh, weird. I don't know what this attack does. Oh. It actually allows, like, a proper attack. That's cool. Oh, we haven't used the axe yet. We really got to get on that. It could have been better. Eh, cross is better. Or rather, the scythe. This is called the Combat Cross in Castlevania Classic. Hence why I refer to it as such. But you can see that there's a lot of like obvious references to Castlevania here. The main character is more like a different type. Actually, we will take this. The main character is more like um, a modern Castlevania oop, than like a classic Vania protagonist. In that he's got a sword and not the whip. Because they always want to make like modern people not use the whip. And I don't know why. Like, swords are cool, I will admit. But every one of their fucking dad has a sword, you know? Like, only a couple of people use whips. So for the Belmont family to make them, like, canon and be like, hey, whips, that's our stuff. I like that, you know? It's cool. So we haven't used Alfred a lot because I haven't been able to get a new sub-weapon for him. Mimics, because obviously... If I remember correctly, this has one of my favorite bosses at the end of it. Oh, these things are interesting. So you pop them, and then they blow up. And then when you hit them, they blow up again. So yeah, Alfred's um, attack is very weak. He has the least amount of life. See, so yeah, Zangatsu's place in the party is almost just kind of there to be like a big old tank. Um, oh, that's good. Because Miriam does the shit that's like actual problem solving. By the way, yes, in case you're wondering, there are a lot of divergent pathways through this game. Oh no, this rat's gonna get so fucked. What? So that's a thing that Alfred can do. He can freeze things solid, and I believe that extends even to bosses. Ah, shit. Oh, boy.
Pardon me, everyone. Just going to adjust this a little bit. Because I'm trying to not cut off the edge of the screen, but I'm also trying to make sure that it's... That's better. Okay, cool. So yeah, now we just continue without Alfred. The sand will suck you down because of course it does. Oh, fuck. Uh, this thing is interesting. This is demon form. It makes Zangatsu do, do more damage, which is kind of irrelevant on the rats because I killed them in one hit anyway. Even with like weaker characters, rats will take, will die instantly. However, um, something interesting. You may have noticed that certain uh, effects will persist to other characters. Demon Flame is included. This means that you can actually combine sub-weapons. We haven't seen it yet, but Miriam's Axe is actually one of the most single-damaging things in the game. Uh, most single-damaging attacks, I should say. Um, Miriam. So what you can do is you can actually freeze an enemy solid with Alfred's uh, Ice Blast. And then... Oh, that's a thing, yeah. You can switch to Zengetsu. Yeah, here we go. They're, they're asking me to set it up. Those enemies that walk in a little sine wave are a reference to the Medusa heads of classic Castlevania. And they're a nightmare in those games because there isn't a casual mode. In this game, you can turn on casual mode, which uh, means that you don't get knocked back. So, this boss is awesome. You gotta climb on his little gold gold stack to uh, hit his face. But you can also attack the gold stack to make sure that it's high enough to jump. So yeah, that's Miriam's attack. It's a big ol' axe swing. But what you can also do is just hit the gold itself. And it'll attack you when you smushes you into the wall like that, as you can see. I can't remember what this guy's name is. So yeah, bouncing and hitting him in the face is valid. But also so is just breaking the coins that he, uh, he generates. If coins land on you or smush you into the wall, it damages you, as it would. It's far easiest to do this with Miriam because of her jump, but Zangetsu also does a lot of damage. Uh, we've run out of hearts, though. Alfred is actually fantastic in this fight. Alfred has um, that little like flame thing, the little flame shield that surrounds him. It's very much like a Mega Man ability. There you go. So he peeks out gold. And it actually damages you. <laughs> and now we're getting my actual favorite character. Not just because he's like useful in gameplay, because the most useful one is Miriam. The way that party members are balanced in this game is really good. This guy's a lot of fun though. He is based off of the original Alucard from Castlevania 3. Cursed shard binder, you carry the power of numerous demons. Very perceptive of you. I require the demon's power to achieve my revenge. At this moment, our objectives align. Cooperation will be fruitful for us both. So be it. I'll let you continue breathing for now. Jebel has become an ally. So yeah, we can play as him.
So, similar to Alucard, he has a magic attack. He can use magic. And while we don't have the hearts to do it, uh, he has another ability uh, unique to Alucard. In that game, in Alucard's original game, um, Castlevania 3, it's overpowered as hell. But in this game, it's actually not so bad. It's this. You become a little bat. And you can attack people. Jumping will revert the transformation. Um, he has unimpressive life. Yeah, he has the second lowest life. His attack is weak, but it's only one that hits diagonally, and it also hits in multiple directions. Which is kind of nice. And he cannot pick up sub-weapons. That one sucks. However, we might have to go up through there, right? But we can just... Hip, 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 and transform. So yes, the Medusa heads are uh, an enemy from the original Castlevania. They fly in a little sine wave. Normally when they attack you, they knock you backwards, making it difficult to traverse areas with them on your ass. Um, so the skeleton dudes actually point us to shortcuts, and you can see that this is impossible to traverse, but with a Gabel, we can go through it. And that actually skips a decent chunk of the level. See, carefully using your health instead of just like... Not getting hit is sometimes not an option, but carefully using your health is sometimes a little better. However, because Gibel hits multiple times and is able to uh, hit in a diagonal manner, he's able to take out dudes upstairs, which is very nice. So, um, I, haven't meant, I haven't brought this up yet, but this is just a little like... I'm putting uh, Dragon Dogma on hiatus for a little bit just because, like, it's very long. And I wanted to play this. And there was a chunk in the schedule where there wasn't much else, so I wanted to get some more games under my belt. You can see that Gebel has to be positioned favorably to fight rats because otherwise he can't actually get underneath them. With the other characters, it's a simple matter of just crouching and swinging. Uh, however, not so with uh, these fellas. So yeah, he's able to just completely, like, annoy a lot of characters. This stage really allows him to shine, though. Like, this stage is explicitly constructed... All the stages, really, are constructed to be like, Hey, that new character you got, this is what they're good at. Damn. Again, this is a little one wide that she can slide through, Miriam, but also Gebel can just uh, s fly through it as a bat. Those wolves are really annoying. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. So this guy's a flamin. He can't be damaged by normal attacks, but if we freeze him, we can just shatter him right out. And then we can take this shortcut. So having a diagonal attack is very useful here because it allows you to stop shit in front of you. However, they're kind of piling up on me. As for why I don't transform into a bat, it doesn't actually provide any defense. And in fact, it'll make you take more damage. Actually, I'm not sure if it makes you take more damage, but getting hit as a bat will kill you instantly. That's an important detail. So again, like, a lot, a lot of shortcuts can be accessed with Jebel in the party. I believe his name is Jebel. 
I don't think it's Gavel. Uh, I'll keep this, actually. But yes, Alucard in the original Castlevania is not balanced very well. He's very overpowered, to be honest, which is good because he's otherwise kind of useless. Because uh, his ability to fly just completely annihilates the game. Because that game is like a lot of hard platforming challenges. But if you can just fly over everything, what's the, what's the take, right? So yeah, there are certain things where using Alucard makes the game like hilariously easy. So you need to be as Miriam to jump up there. And then you can either jump to that, which will give you 60. Or uh, you could also just fly up there with Mr. Jebel. There you go. I hate these dogs, though. For real. This upcoming boss is decently hard, but it's not terrible. This is the kind of game where, like... Uh, you need it most. We're just, you know, good practice can help you get everything. I've been playing this game for like seven hours, I want to say. Uh, I am recording this in advance, though. Next boss. All right. So, yes, very, very scary. So the explosions will damage you pretty bad. There you go. Thank you. So with our man, we can just stand here and do this. And as long as we avoid the explosions, we'll be fine. This is like unprecedented. I've never done this well at this boss. I probably shouldn't jinx it though, Jesus. Phase two. So yeah, you now gotta avoid stuff from the bottom and the top. Taking damage downstairs will slow you down, making it so you can't get to the platform and hit that guy. Shit. It's a little easier to do with Miriam because she is just quicker and her jump carries her a little further. But yeah, that's another boss down. I was hoping to do it with uh, one of our new boys because we haven't seen their uh, win animations yet. Yes, this game is cheap as heck on Steam. Um, man. This is another. This is another thing where it's like there's so much that I feel like I don't even know where to start. And like this is this is a game created at the butt end of Castlevania, and it's not even called Castlevania, but you know what? That's fine. Um, I'm gonna leave it here for now. And I should remember I'm on uh, slot four, but yes, I've been Alfred. This has been Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon, Curse of the Moon One, for that matter. Um, I may play the other one. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.